And today I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite types of weapons, an authentic antique example, of course. It is the Wahaika. That name translates as Mouth of the Fish. And as you can probably tell from the picture gallery here, uh, it's a Maori weapon. Fierce warriors from the indigenous population of New Zealand. Look at our man here on the left and what he's holding in his hand. This uh, warrior culture, of course, is famous for its showmanship, right? Make a big, intimidating show before the fight, so you get a lot of great pictures like that. Pretty sure we all know where New Zealand is, but just in case, here's the map. So yeah, you know, tongues out, the famous dance, brandishing of weapons, all good stuff, good and fascinating. So the uh, panoply of weapons developed by the Maori are pretty distinctive. Uh, more than one is kind of famous. This one is of particular importance, as I understand it. It could be a prestige object. Here we see someone clearly of importance, and you'll notice that he's holding one and a finely carved one. Real interesting symmetry with the late 19th century portraits of Native American chiefs, and they would almost always be holding their tomahawk. Perhaps his looked something like this. Uh, incredible attention to detail. Obviously, this could be an artistic object as well as a weapon. It could be used by chieftains to emphasize speech. So when you're giving a speech, it was kind of an accessory. These were generally made from wood or whalebone. The wood ones, like here, uh, were prone to much more intricate carving. Whalebone is very dense, which is why it makes a good weapon. And luckily for us, that's the kind I got to see. And here it is, definitely one with the classic outline. They have kind of a sweeping shape, right, under the mouth of the fish, which might actually be, they say, a whale reference. Really reminds me a lot of the Native American jawbone tomahawk, and not just because of the uh, similarity in material. So you have this hand-to-hand -hand weapon, it's paddle-shaped, you're going to strike with the edge. So you can see how it almost looks like a bladed weapon, yeah, that's how you would swing it. So what is at the bottom of the screen, that's the part you would usually strike with. One thing that you don't see on a lot of specimens is that notch. Do you see that right in the center carved into the striking portion? I don't think that serves a functional purpose. I'd be willing to bet it's just artistic. Meanwhile, that clipped point on the top in uh, knife terminology, you see that's kind of sweeping up. That is a much more typical feature. And you pretty much always have this duck bill shaped front which they would thrust with in battle. And carvings on the middle back and pommel were also regular features of the design. Speaking of the pommel, you see that hole drilled right above it? That was also a regular feature, and that was for a thong to be looped through, so you had a hand retention system. Now if you look at the notch on the back, so that's the right side, at this moment of the image, um, there's talk about that being specifically designed for hooking an opponent's weapon as you kind of sweep it backwards. And that could be why it's there. It could also be an aesthetic thing. Sometimes these are much deeper, much longer. It just depends. Uh, so I think some maybe have a more practical shape than others. When it's a small little flourish, I, I'm not sure that's what it would actually be used for. Now you can see a detailed version of the uh, figure carved on the lower back, right? So that humanoid figure, we're told that was probably a war god of some kind. And that's a typical feature, but I'd say it's usually not this large or detailed. Now the Wahaika is just one type of short fighting club, a flat-shaped fighting club. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them because we're here to look at the one I got to see, but here's a type that's so closely related, I think I'll go ahead and show you, and one day hopefully I'll get to hold one of these in my hands. So I'm going to really mess this pronunciation up, but this is a Cotillate, and you can see how it really shares some design features. Obviously this one's made out of whalebone as well, but specifically, this time, the striking surfaces are the same, it's symmetrical, and they look almost exactly like the striking surface on the weapon we're looking at today. Uh, here's one I got to see in person. I am glad that whales are pretty much no longer hunted, uh, but yeah, old impact weapons made out of whalebone look really awesome. And just a little bit more on the lingo here, a patu, P-A-T-U, that's a more general term for this overall type of weapon. So when you see a much simpler design and outline like this, that's what you would call it. And you might in particular already know about one version of it, I guess I'll call it, which is pictured over there on the left, scrolling up, uh, the ones made out of jade. So those are mirror, 
M-E-R-E, maybe the most distinctive weapon in the Maori arsenal, uh, and I did get to hold a vintage example of those as well, so that'll come up in a future video. But back to our subject, uh, if you've paid attention, you now know enough to have seen this gallery of six weapons here and know that there's three Wahaikas. I know someone's gonna post a comment about why that's wrong and whatnot, but I, you know, I checked a lot of different sources, that's all I can tell you. And back to our specimen, kind of an up-close look at the grain. And now let me give you a better idea of the uh, depth, or lack thereof, the flatness of the instrument. Of course, it does swell as well. It's not a perfectly flat design. That wouldn't be very smart. And as you can see, the edges are thinned out to the point that they would provide cutting damage. It's not a slicing instrument. I wouldn't describe the edges as sharp necessarily, uh, but I bet they would cut skin. I'll just go ahead and finish tracing the other side of the instrument and then give you a look edge on like this. So yeah, that is no joke. That's really reducing the surface impact, right? Concentrating the force. I might have underemphasized earlier the thrusting application, so that reduction is going to benefit the user, whether it's thrusting or swinging. And I bet you've been waiting for this. How big is this thing? It's big. I'm a little Latino guy. Uh, this thing's huge and heavy. Maori are, are big, strong dudes. Uh, notice how you get a really tight fit, even with my hand, where you grip because of the artistic design that actually helps get a real secure hold. Because I'm in between that carving on the back and the swelling of the pommel. No, sorry, the pictures uh, dragged me in another direction. So back to the thrusting with the tip. Yeah, that seems to have been a fundamental technique, which might be surprising when you and I look at this kind of shape here. I mean, I immediately picture hatchet-like swings. One other thing that this fits into overall is, you know, Pacific Island culture had a lot of paddle-shaped weapons, like I've used that word before, right, in this video, and some of them were two-handed, so there seems to have been a transition from, well, I'm using this instrument to paddle a boat, to let me use it to fight, and then let me make a fighting version of that thing. Here's an interesting example of that, and sometimes the connection to actual rowing is way more obvious. Uh, but anyway, you know, did these short handheld versions stem from that? Uh, we'll never know. Of course, you might be thinking of the Karate Kobudo Eku when I talk about that. I'm going to wrap it up here with some final images. Yeah, a very rare weapon type because if you think about the total population that used these, it just wasn't very big, you know, globally speaking. And then on top of that, the material, the actual whalebone, adds to that. Uh, these remind me of the Indonesian Karis as well with kind of the mythological carving on a very functional weapon. One from a overall small but very memorable warrior culture. And that'll do it. Thank you.